welcome all visitors who are with us today. If you have offering envelopes that you're still looking for today, would be on the back shelf of chairs. Please collect them after Mass today. If you've missed our previous announcement regarding intinction, there is an article in the bulletin today. All giving tree gifts need to be returned to the back of the church today. Calendars for 2015 can be found on the back shelf of church. We thank the Chedzoy Funeral Home for providing these calendars. There is a blood drive scheduled for this Saturday, December 27th, at, starting at 8 a.m. in the Parish Center, in memory of Elizabeth Amasama. Prayer teams are available after Mass for your prayers or intentions at the front of the church. Please make sure your cell phone is turned off during Mass. And now we invite you to take a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts and minds to enter into this time of worship and praise. juxtaposition of first reading the gospel today. On the one hand, we have King David, who seeks to build a dwelling place, a temple for the Lord. Instead, it is the Lord who promises to establish a house, a legacy for him. On the other hand, it is Mary's yes that brings that legacy to its culmination, the birth of the Savior from the house of David. Let us listen and ponder God's faithful promise keeping. Let us now turn to one another and offer a sign of grief.
My brothers and sisters, let's take a moment to acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, defender of the poor, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, refuge for the weak, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, hope for sinners, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes, and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me, your throne shall stand firm forever. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in the song response, number 82, Forever I Will Sing, number 82. <coughs>
his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Advent. Advent. Watching and waiting. Preparing. And it's almost over. Christmas is almost here. And the anticipation, especially among the children, is exhausting to those of us who are no longer children. But what is it that we're watching and waiting for? For some of us, it may be the release of the best movies of the year or the after-holiday sales. Some of us might even be waiting for the birth of Jesus or peace on earth. Anticipation it invokes feelings of excitement, but also it might be tinged with a little fear. Fear of the unknown, because that's the future unknown. So, what if those movies we're waiting for stink? <laughs> or, what if all the good stuff we want on sale is the stuff that's not on sale? What if, what if all of those things? I wonder if anticipation is what David felt. His military victories firmly established him as the king. He was the youngest male of the family, if you remember, plucked from obscurity to become a great general and the king of the entire nation of Israel. Things were going great for him, and he has great ambitions. He wants to build a temple. But is there a little fear mixed in with that excitement? How about when the prophet comes to him and gives him God's reply to the ambitions that he has? God says, no house for me, David. You are not going to build it. I'm going to build one for you. Hmm. Your heir will be a son to me. I can imagine David going, what does that mean? God will be a father to my heir? What about me? Can you imagine there might have been a little anxiety mixed in with the good news that David was receiving? What about Mary? Messages quite often come to prophets and God's chosen by way of dreams. If you remember Matthew's Gospel, the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. Luke's story, however, reports that Gabriel was sent from God directly to Mary. 
And coming to her, he says, Hail, full of grace. This is no dream. He appears to her, addresses her, and then says, Do not be afraid, Mary. Imagine, if you will, an angel appearing in front of you. The angel appeared to Mary and spoke her name. I don't know about you, but if it were me, I'd be falling down in fear. That is, if I weren't falling down, clutching my chest. <coughs> Luke might be a master of understatement because he says Mary pondered this sort of, what this sort of greeting might be. As if angels were an everyday visitor or occurrence. <coughs> Do you think that that pondering might be done with a little bit of fear? God's messenger appears directly in front of me. You see, we believe in a pretty sanitized version of the Christmas story. It's all nice and neat. But think about this. God, speaking through an angel, says to Mary, I know you're young. I know you're a virgin. I know that Moses prescribed that the penalty for unwed mothers or adultery is to be stoned to death. But I want you to have a son who will inherit the throne of David. Do not be afraid, just trust me. <clears throat> Mary's reply is, may it be done according to your word. Do we think about these things as we ponder Advent and what it means? Can we even imagine this as we decorate our homes and trim the tree and bake the cookies? We know what the story is, but we quite often gloss over the dirty little bits. A pregnant Mary, probably with morning sickness, goes off to visit her mother's elderly and pregnant cousin and stays for three months. She probably attends Elizabeth as she gives birth all the while wondering what it's going to be like, how Joseph is going to react when she comes home and her belly is starting to swell. What is she going to tell him? It's a gift from God? What will he say and what will he do? Now we know that it turns out fine because Joseph has a dream and he takes her into his home. <clears throat> but then, then they have to prepare for the long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. A donkey ride over dirt roads. And remember, there's a Roman occupation army and throngs of people traveling just as they are to gather for the census. piece of cake just before you're ready to deliver your first son. <clears throat> now, I don't mean this talk to be a downer about your excitement about Advent or Christmas season. <clears throat> I don't have a particularly strong Marian devotion, but at least I am slightly aware of what she may have gone through and have great respect for that sacrifice. It may be because I preached on fear not long ago that it's still on my mind. Or it may be because my son's wife just gave birth a few months ago that these things are fresh on my mind with today's readings. <coughs> but if your anticipation for Christmas and the Christmas season is not mixed with a little anxiety and a little fear, if it's not remembering the dirt of the stable, then you probably missed part of the story. 
It's not just a cuddly baby and clean bed. <coughs> With that said, I'll have to ask, what have you really been contemplating this Advent season? We've got just a few more days before we celebrate the birth of Jesus. A few more days to watch and to wait. God said, do not be afraid, Mary. She replied, I am the handmaid of the Lord. That's quite the sacrifice. And why not think about that a little bit as you're waiting? And do not be afraid. Jamie Conkeys, 
Vivian Mitros, Anita Yorksky, and Rose Barnstead, that all will share the joy of the eternal banquet. And Vincent, Kathleen, and James Mahoney, for whom this Mass is offered. <coughs> we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions spoken in our hearts. That they will be heard and granted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> Almighty Father, as we watch and wait for the light of Christmas, sustain us in your loving care. Hear our prayers and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
thy sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord and Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, and Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory as without end we proclaim.
bolster us as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
ask that you all remain seated for a brief moment as we have a special message from Deacon Rick Demars. Number three. 